Happy Tuesday. How you doing? Hey, I want to start a new series today. And it is entitled, Redeemed by Jesus and Blessed by God. This is incredible stuff. This is, this will take you to a different level of the blessing. A higher level. It's taking me to a higher level and I'm just learning it. I'm just, of course, this is stuff that I've known for years. I even wrote the book on the blessing. But I want to take you. Now, a, a lot of you people are blessed and you have the blessing working in your lives. But I want you to go to a higher level. Some of you don't have, some of you have had the blessing spoken over you, but it's not really working in your lives yet. We're going to make it work. We're going to get you to the point where you are living in abundance and living a healthy life. Say this with me today. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart, getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Great things are coming my way. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Pastor Jim is the ultimate pastor because I get results and I'm available to you. I get results for people. This is what I this is what Jesus did. When Jesus was on this earth, he got results for people. People came to him and got results. People call me, they come to me and they get results. It's the way it's supposed to work. Say, everything always works out for me. Share this video with everybody you know. Let's try during this year, everybody, to, to get 10 people watching these videos. That's your assignment. Get 10 people to calling me and watching these videos. When you do, when you get somebody to, to watch those videos, to watch these videos, or call me, you are actually changing their life. Do you know that you will have lifelong favor with the people that you point in the direction of this ministry? They will never forget it was you who told them to call me. I was talking to somebody uh, yesterday, right after we got down from flying, she called me. And we were talking about uh, one of her friends that who had had a terrible, was in a terrible place. She had gotten a, a DUI, a second DUI. She was going to lose her driver's license. And then, of course, because of that, she was going to lose a very high paying job because she had to have her car. And if she got a conviction, everything, her whole life was about to change. Plus, she had to do some jail time. It was just awful. What, plus, the amount of money it was going to cost her. So she had her friend call me. I spoke favor over her friend. Now, her friend called me a bunch of times because she was so... She would call and cry. Oh, my goodness. Just cry and sobbing uncontrollably on the phone that she had made that mistake. Mistakes cause suffering, folks. And I kept saying, relax, I got this. Let me have it. Finally, she did. Her case was dismissed. And they had her. I mean, they had her. She was not a chance. Not a chance, just a slam dunk conviction. And it was a real nasty prosecutor. He dismissed the charges and then said afterwards, I don't even know why I did that. I know why. Because I said so. Because I said so. I proclaimed it. I declared it. And used the power in the name of Jesus to make that happen for her. That's why I'm the ultimate pastor. That's the kind of results I get. That's incredible, folks. 
And believe me, she will never forget who told her to call me. She'll never forget that. As long as she lives, she will never forget this incident. She's still incredibly grateful. But I said, give God the glory. Give God the glory. It's his power. I just tap into it. I want to show you something here. This fell out of my Bible because I spent so much time in Galatians and Ephesians. These are letters that Paul wrote. And he wrote this letter to Galatians, uh, the Galatians, and talked about the blessing. And he said, now get a load of this. He said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everybody who hangs on a tree, that, because, so that, the blessing of Abraham can come on the Gentiles. Through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit, which is the blessing, through faith. Now, people, let me tell you something. We're going to sit here. We're sitting right here. Just sit down, put your feet up, get comfortable, get yourself a cup of coffee, glass of iced tea, whatever it is you drink, and listen to this for the next several weeks, maybe even a month, because you are about to go up a level in the blessing. Maybe some of you are going to go up several levels. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the revelation knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. The more of a revelation you get about the blessing, the more it will work in your life. And you're going to hear some things during this that you've never heard before. I'm going to teach you how to have faith in God's blessing. Kenneth Copeland has faith in God's blessing, folks. He believes, the, he, he always says, well, the blessing will take care of me. Blessing will take care of me. Somebody says, Brother Copeland, we need money. Say, ah, the blessing will take care of me. Blessing takes care of us. And it does. Only if there's only one way the blessing takes care of you, folks. And that's in abundance. Because that's the only way God knows how to do things. He, God is not, and you're going to hear a lot about this, he is not a God of enough. He's a God of too much. He's the too much God. Now, why this is so important in here is because if you really look at this, I want you to read this. Your, your assignment between today and tomorrow is to get your Bible and read in Galatians 3, 13, and 14. And I want you to understand that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law so that the blessing can, so that it might come upon you, that you would be able to receive it by faith. See, before you're redeemed, you can't receive the blessing. You can't get it. Because the curse of the law blocks the blessing, and Paul the Apostle knew that. I wished he would have said that in those kind of words. But Christ had to redeem us from it. To redeem is to buy back, to pay, to purchase. To re to if, if you pawn something in a pawn shop and you want to get it back, it's called redeeming it. You have to redeem it. And to redeem it, you have to pay for it. And then he gave it to you. Christ paid for us so that God could have us and bless us. Redeemed by Jesus, blessed by God. You cannot be blessed by God until you've been redeemed by Jesus. Now, in order to qualify for the blessing, you must be born again. 
It says, you have to, the blessing comes through Abraham. Only to Abraham's seed is the blessing, are, are people eligible to get the blessing? Only to his seed, his offspring, his children, if you will. It says here, so they, you can see I spend a little time in here, folks, because I memorize these. I, I, read, I have read these thousands of times. They're in my spirit. They go, I read them out loud. They go in my, out of my mouth, into my ear, down into my spirit. It says here in verse uh, 9, it says, So then they who are of faith are blessed with Abraham. With Abraham. It says here, it says, Know ye therefore, they which are of faith, in verse 7, those people are the children of Abraham. If you are born again, you are a child, a spiritual child of Abraham, and you are eligible for the blessing. Now, there's only two ways people can be eligible for the blessing. They must be a direct descendant of Abraham, which the Jewish people are. The truth of the matter is, they are eligible for the blessing even if they're not born again. But you're not. They are. They are eligible for the blessing even if they're not born again. And many of them are. They live in absolute... Why do you think they have all the money? Because they have the blessing. That's the only reason. You, on the other hand, if you're a Gentile, and a lot of you people out there are Gentiles, a Gentile is anybody other than Jewish people. So, uh, if you're a Gentile, which I am, you are, everybody listening to me, almost everybody is probably a Gentile. There are some Jewish people who listen to me. You're not a Gentile. You're Jewish. So you are eligible for the blessing because of the bloodline. We are eligible because of Jesus' bloodline, the scarlet thread of redemption. That makes us, once we're born again, we're born into the family. It's, it's, like, it's like we're adopted into the family. Jesus talks about, he says, I, I, am, I am the vine, you are the branches. We're, we're adopted in. And as we are, uh, an adopted child has the same rights and the same inheritance as the real children. And so we do. And our inheritance is the covenant and the blessing. Now, I want you to understand this because in order to receive the blessing of the Lord, you have to know that it belongs to you. And it tells us in verse 29, this is what I want you to really see today. Verse 29, it says, it says here, he says, if you be Christ, you can see I spent a little time over here too. If you be Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. The blessing of Abraham is your inheritance. Now, a lot of people inherit things and never possess it. To inherit something is one thing. To possess it is another. I've had people, people in my church, people have been have been given things through inheritance and had a terrible time getting it. Actually, I have helped people get their inheritance, their financial inheritance that they had from friends and relatives. I, cause, Believe me, when I get involved, they get it. You got an inheritance coming and you can't get it, call me. I'll get it taken care of for you. I know how to do that because I insist that you get your inheritance. And I am insisting right now that you get your inheritance of God's blessing and the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. And it's your inheritance. You got it coming. You deserve it because of what Jesus did. And I'm going to see to it that you get it. Hang with me. Stay with me. Watch what happens.